Hello everyone again. I'm Kim Lim from Netri. From now on, I'm going to introduce this topic, uh, dynamic subtitle, a string method based on audio analysis. Here's the today's outline. First, let me introduce the motivation of our study and uh, also introduce some related works. And second, I'll explain the pro our proposed scheme and I'll show some examples of our experiments. And uh, finally, we will reach a conclusion. The introduction. Today, there are 650 million people uh, with disabi disabilities in the world and especially there are 66 million people suffering from the hearing impairment. It brings them difficulty in video content, content understanding due to the loss of audio information. So the motivation of our study is how can we enhance the video accessibility for hearing impaired. That's why we will start uh, this, to this topic. The main method to make the media programs accessible to them is providing subtitles with video. The conventional subtitles only provide a basic function to display the actor's dialogues. Uh, people cannot understand the context of the scene. Uh, let's, let's see the figure. Left two are closed captions examples in the broadcast system and the right two are subtitles with the audio video media contents. So some researchers have developed a different subtitling method using various approach. As an example, I, I will introduce two previous studies. The first one uh, proposed a font modifying technique giving the ambience of scene for hearing impaired. They are they trying to express the voice volume, speed and pitch by modifying text size, length, and the height. But it, it must be a simple approach. It's an, uh, another study. This study proposed a scheme to enhance the video accessibility using a dynamic captioning method. It, it explores a rich set of technologies, including face detection and recognition, uh, speech script alignment, etc. This dynamic captioning method puts scripts a suitable position to help hearing impaired better understand uh, who is speaking. In addition, it progressively highlights the script word by word using the speech recognition technique. However, it needs a complex algorithm. So, let's introduce our proposed scheme. Uh, this figure demonstrates the schematic illustration of our proposed uh, subtitling author method. The, the input, inputs are audio video content and the subtitle. From the audio signal, speech features are extracted, uh, uh, and using this extracted feature, we calculate the voice, voice the frame and align the subtitle optionally and matching the previously extracted feature to, to the subtitle and change it uh, dynamically. And also, we can, you can apply the speaker recognition uh, optionally. Uh, let's see the speech e feature extraction. The first one is short time energy. It, the short time energy is magnitude of each signal's frame. So it indicates the voice volume. Voice volume imparts the important impor information about human's emotion. So we, so we symbolize the speech, uh, speech energy as a form of uh, emotional information to obtain more cues about the dialogue. And second, pitch is the fundamental frequency of speech, uh, music, or tone, a music, musical note or tone. When human speaks, the fre fundamental fre frequency for speech is typically vary from 100 Hz to 500 Hz. And also some studies reveal that the voice pitch is related to human's emotional states. So 
In our study, we also use a pitch characteristic to represent the speaker's feelings. Mm, the last feature is MFCC. MFCC is a male frequency capstone coefficient. Uh, this feature is based on the known, characteris known characteristics of the human ears, critical bandwidth frequency. Uh, the MFCC makes use of two type filter based on human ear characteristic, a linearly spaced filter and a logarithmically spaced filter. Uh, as shown in this figure, uh, this, this scale has a linear frequency spacing below 1000 Hz and the logarithmic spacing above 1000 Hz. After conducting the male frequency filter whopping, the log, log male spectrum has to be converted back to the time domain using discrete time uh, di discrete, discrete cosine transform. This result, MFCC, is a good representation of the spectral pro properties of the speech. And MFCC is primarily used as a valid feature in speech or speaker recognition. After, after extracting this feature, we matching the extracted feature to the subtitle. The signal energy is one of the important features that represent the speaker's emotions, as previously I mentioned. So, therefore, we match the speech energy level and energy variation to the text size and thickness of the letter. And the fundamental frequency of speech can vary from 100 hertz for male, vo male voice to 500 hertz to for female voice. Based on this, we match the high-pitched voice to red color and low-pitched voice to violet color. Uh, the, MF the MFCC feature is used in this section. We want to recognize the who is speaking in the media content to understand the context. So we use the speaker recognition technique. For the speaker recognition, the Gaussian mixture model was trained using the extracted MFCCs. GMM, the Gaussian mixture model, uh, is a par parametric prob probability density function represents as a weighted sum of Gaussian component, de component de densities. It is commonly used as a method for speaker recognition system. From now on, I'll show some experimental experiment examples. Our experimental environment is as follows, but I'll skip this page because uh, we don't have much time. Uh, here's an ex experimental result examples. These figures are screenshot of dynamic subtitle authored by proposed method. For dynamic subtype to authoring, we extract the speech feature. Next, we conduct the vo voice active detection and mapping the speech feature onto the subtitles for express the speaker's emotion and context of the scene. See the right side, right side of the slide, pitch matches to the text color and energy matches to the text size and when we take a bold, when uh, we take a bold, when the energy changes uh, uh, suddenly. In addition, we it progressively highlights the script using the ASS subtitle format. The highlighting time depends on only just the uh, word length. A speaker recognition speaker recognition result are like this. Uh, the red, sub red circle is recognized character's ID by applying speaker recognition method. The accuracy of the speaker recognition in our test is 85%, but it isn't much accurate because we do not test uh, many contents. We test uh, only just 10 contents and 20 characters. The conclusion. This paper described a uh, new dynamic subtitling authoring method by analyzing the speech signal. In the proposed, we extract the 
uh, speech features such as STE, GCL, pitch and MFCCs. Uh, then the, the major goal we is create in our study is creating the dynamic subtitle for the hearing impaired to understand the media contents better. Uh, uh, it can literally apply to the conventional uh, subtitle pro production system and the, the proposed method can be achieved with a simple algorithm. Thank you. using more dimensions than just the text to emphasize the speaker's intention, especially the color. But wasn't it a problem if you use like red, violet, so different colors on different backgrounds, which is, um, of course, in the movie you always have different backgrounds, that you have a very bad contrast sometimes, and that is a, I imagine it could be a big problem for reading it. Uh, it must be a good question. I, I didn't think about that parts, but uh, your suggestion is maybe a good idea to our method. Uh, I'll consider with my coworker and applying it uh, to see it more better. Another question? Yeah, um, the second one would be, um, did you use also other algorithms for the training sets? So. Um, except of the Gaussian mixture model? No, I didn't use, I didn't use the, the other uh, training algorithm, but GMM is the basic, basic model, training model, so I, we, we use, the, use it uh, as a test of the dynamic subtitling. One of the big problems for anyone trying to read uh, subtitles or captions while watching a video is the overload of information. So one of the problems is going to be you put more and more information in the video, in, in the subtitles. Yes. But if they're going to spend more time looking at it, they're going to lose time being able to actually watch the, the video. Yeah. And if that information gives them less information or enjoyment of the video itself, and they're not really want to use it. So mm -hmm. have you thought how you can test or trial this? Uh, we, I don't think the test uh, is uh, this subtitling, subtitle, but you must, you can, you could be a right. The uh, people who are hearing, who, who have a hearing impaired don't want the complex uh, subtitle. So we are now the, just test this, uh, this is uh, possible, so uh, we when we are make a authoring tool or the some other, many we have a many test and we, we want to get, we, we are going to have a subjective test for the, uh, for, uh, to, you to have a peop people have, uh, to answer all the questions, so. Thank you. Um, just any other questions? Oh, another. Okay. I'm going over. And most color in its own right has motion, and I would recommend avoiding it at all costs. Thank you for your presentation. It's quite interesting. For engineers, I am. The application of the technology is always a big issue. But I'm uh, always wondering the following mm, about usability of what we have proposed. Did you obtain any kind of feedback from the users about if the colors that we were using were the appropriate ones for transmitting the emotion that you were trying to transmit? Or did you in uh, the, the opposite uh, direction? I mean, you decided the colors without uh, asking the users about the, the feeling that they would have. Do you follow this? Yes. I exactly un I cannot understand uh, your question, but that's a suggestion, right? Or no, what he's asking you is whether you you decided on what colors what 
probably based on the frequencies of colors matching the frequencies of the voice. Um, but did you ask the users whether they like those colors to be used for that purpose? No, I, I didn't. We didn't. No, and we I'm going to tell you there's a lot of research on this, and you should not be using color at all. Yeah, just, just based on the previous researches. So. No, the previous research says there's too much emotional confusion with color. The only one that's consistent is red, and it's about passion. Hmm. All the rest, color has emotion in its own right. It's also it's very cultural. It's culturally diverse. Um, and perhaps in Korea, you would find one thing, but you move it to Vietnam, you're going to find something else with color and the interpretation of color. So I would recommend that you stop using color at all and you try something else. There's lots of other things to try, but color is a really bad thing to use. <laughs> Sorry about that, but, okay, thank but uh, you. there's a lot of research to support that. Yes. Um, and uh, it's just, it, Maybe you logically make sense, but it is very confusing to people. Okay, thank so, you. And uh, you've got great stuff to happen, and you don't want it to be color to interfere with that. Okay, thank you.